Dr. Charles Stanley, whose radio and TV sermons were broadcast all over the world, passed away on Tuesday. He had worked his way up from a little town in Virginia to become pastor of First Baptist Atlanta. He was 90. The nearly half-century tenure of Dr. Stanley in the pulpit of First Baptist Church was nearly derailed on more than one occasion. Before becoming senior pastor, Charles Stanley was punched in the face by a congregant. This isn't the first chapter of his ministry, but it could be the most interesting. In October of 1969, Charles Stanley walked through the doors of First Baptist Church of Atlanta. He will be serving as an assistant pastor, but then Roy McLean, the senior pastor, retired. The topic of Charles being promoted to the top position came up in conversation. The plan was supported by certain members of the executive committee. Some people didn't. There were months of heated discussion. One of the group members offered paying Charles to lead during the conflict. There were many violent debates, and one congregant even struck the pastor in the face out of anger when the latter refused to remove his name from consideration. Dr. Stanley seemingly did an about-face and decided to ignore the situation. The minister could have stepped away, but he preferred to put his faith in God and see how things unfolded on their own. After much deliberation, the committee and the congregation elected him to the position of senior pastor. Dr. Stanley's nearly 50-year tenure at the institution vindicates the choice. Charles Stanley's ambition was admirable and constructive. He reasoned that the Great Commission required him to spread the gospel to as many people as possible, and so he started the Chapel Hour in his hometown of Atlanta to achieve precisely that. He joyfully reached out to individuals and ministered to them in his sphere of influence. In 1977, he received an invitation from the Christian Broadcasting Network to broadcast his sermons to a nationwide audience via television. Soon after, he merged the group into what is now known as In Touch Ministries. The show airs on thousands of television, radio, and satellite stations around the world, reaching an audience of over 115 million people in the United States alone. Famous preacher Louis Giglio knew the late pastor well and looked up to him as a spiritual guide. Dr. Stanley was a titan of faith and a bellwether among preachers of our generation, Giglio stated. His straightforward but persuasive proclamation of the unchanging truth of God's Word laid the groundwork for personal relationships with God for countless people all throughout the world. Dr. Stanley wasn't just a teacher and preacher. He served as president of the Southern Baptist Convention for two terms, during which time progressives attempted to push the denomination away from biblical orthodoxy. As usual, Dr. Stanley held fast. The long-serving pastor did face difficulties in his own life. The pastor and his wife Anna's marital problems were made public in 1993. Anna wanted a divorce, but he talked her into staying and trying to save their marriage instead. In the late 1990s, the couple had a tough time. Anna Stanley's divorce petition was publicized in the year 2000. The news generated widespread discussion and debate. Dr. Stanley's continued function as a religious leader was questioned by some. Some people thought he ought to stay, though. Charles Stanley stayed on as the head shepherd, a position he will hold until October 2020. After retiring, Dr. Stanley still made regular visits to his church office until he was 90 years old. I've learned that it's important to maintain setting goals and making plans even as you become older. Dr. Stanley's longtime aide and Pastor Paul Diamond told me that the In Touch founder died peacefully in his sleep. He can finally rest, he declared. At first in his ministry, Dr. Charles Stanley faced opposition from inside his church. In the midst of it all, he struggled emotionally, and even at the end, when some people said he should resign because he was too old. Obey God and let him handle the consequences, he would advise. The veteran minister with the southern drawl and the heart for the lost, however, made the most of the gifts God had given him and was blessed beyond his wildest dreams. Thanks for watching.